This video is sponsored by Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's Artorama Online has been serving artists for over 50 years, providing only the best quality art supplies. Jerry's Artorama has premier lines that sell all over the world and are used by millions of artists and professionals worldwide for amazing results. In addition to over 65,000 fine art supplies, choose from over 4,000 free art lessons, oil painting, drawing, acrylics, watercolors, mixed media, and the largest selection of new supplies professionally evaluated and created by artists for artists. Jerry's Artorama has been empowering artists since 1968. We provide reliability, better art supplies, great prices, and exceptional service. The quality of your art matters to us. What's up, people? Welcome to our live stream. Today, we're going to be announcing the winners for the April Art Dare, and we're also going to be announcing the July Art Dare. I'm sorry, the June Art Dare. And so if you would like to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, check out artprof.org where we have lots of free resources, tutorials, critiques, art dares, pro development, and all that cool stuff. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Miss Prof Lou. The April Art Dare was to create an artwork about your home kitchen. Let's get started by looking at the first artist. This is Carolyn Smith from the US. And Carolyn says, this art era was an interesting exercise in making the mundane interesting. Found myself thinking about unusual angles and cropping to help with the effect. Echoing the Coca-Cola red and the framing of the image felt right. I also learned a lot about color while trying to represent the silver of the cans. Well, a Coke can is a pretty mundane, boring object we take for granted. And what do you see Carolyn did with that, Jordan? Yeah, I think it's brilliant that you um, that you use the Coke label or the logo as the framing device. I think that's really interesting. And how you're taking the, that element and using the composition to kind of go back in space. And we're seeing multiple different sides of the Coke can. Um, I, th I think that's just really fun. And I enjoy seeing all these different angles and how we see different parts of the lettering and all that. It's also great, Carolyn, who I believe is live here in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us, Carolyn. I love that in some of the grays, you can see that Carolyn blended in little hints of red into the gray. And that's so brilliant because I mean, how much can you do color-wise <laughs> with a silver can? There aren't that many colors in there for the most part. I also like that Carolyn made the text a little bit hard to read, that you have to work mm -hmm. to figure out what the text is. Why do you think that's important or, or different, Jordan? Yeah, I like it because it adds a layer of mystery. I think it's, first off, the Coca-Cola logo is something we probably all recognize immediately, but I think it would just be too easy for it to just say Coke, like right on the front. And so by having the couple of letters here, a couple there, you can kind of piece it together in your head like a math problem. Pat says, love the way you framed that image. Seven Angelic says, like the limited color palette here, really nice angle. Brittany says, reflections are gorgeous. The touch of aqua is great. Thank you everybody for all your comments on each other's artwork. I think it's lovely the way people support and encourage each other. But Jordan, it's also fun, these really flat geometric shapes around the composition. That's also a nice change of pace because I feel like if you only had the cans and a regular rectangle, it might feel even overwhelming to have that many cans. So I really love that choice. All right, let's look at Priya Amargi, who is from India. Priya says, mind wandering in the kitchen as I wait for the coffee to brew or the food to be ready is one of the few <laughs> guilt and distraction-free pleasures of my day. I wanted to sketch and share the views of my kitchen where I like to gaze at, temporarily lose myself, the gas burner as I prepare the food, the windows, my dog resting nearby, and more. And Jordan Priya did several pieces for this art dare, and it's also mixed media, many different moments of marks with pen and colored pencil and marker. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think this is so fun. I especially like this image a lot just because we're getting to see a little bit more of the space. Uh, I like how you have the, I guess that's the cabinet door that's open just a little bit and the, uh, the skillet in the background. It just really shows the environment and the type of kitchen that this place or that this is. Um, so yeah, great job at showing all the little details of stuff that you see every day, but you found a way to make it unique and special. I love that Priya has so many things in all the compositions, but it really holds together as a composition. You think having all these objects would feel very disparate, but I think Priya, what you did so well is you really create a sense of place. So even though this piece is about the cheese grater, you still see the cheese on the counter. <laughs> There's stuff in the background. And so that is really coming across is the entire environment, even though you are highlighting specific objects that live in there. What do you think about the color, Jordan? Like this one's very muted with Priya's dog. Yeah, I think there's a very wide range of color throughout the series. Um, this one so far is definitely the most muted one, but you could still tell what everything is. Like you could tell, totally tell it's a dog laying on the um, on the tiles of the floor. And then there are some other ones where you mentioned the cheese grater, like the objects are very clear as to what they are, but I think they're drawn very simply to, uh, to the point where it's sort of indicated and uh, it's not overtly stated. And I really like that about it. Sentient says, Priya, you have a really admirable looseness in your marks and shapes. Fauna says, these pieces are amazing, super interesting. And we also have Carolyn who says, I really like seeing the several images. I feel like I'm putting together a picture of the kitchen through them. Yeah, and this piece is really cool because we're only seeing a piece of the stove because it's been cropped very dramatically at the top. But actually one of my favorite parts of this composition is this cord that leads you downwards and it also has a cast shadow. So there are a lot of brilliant choices, I think in Priya's images that really get the composition to move. Mm -hmm. And what about Jordan, the texture difference between the marker and what I think might be colored pencil or crayon? Mm -hmm. I, I always endorse texture differences because it's, it's always way too easy to just slap on the same texture for everything. And I like how uh, how Priya took the time to really say, hey, this is the stove, this is a cookbook, this is a piece of fruit, this is, you know, and again, it really makes the place feel more alive by having those differences because that's what we see in reality. Not everything has a texture of the, uh, the skin of an apple. This is Ananya, who is actually Gargi, who is also Priya. So thank you so much, Gargi, for joining us. ELW says, love all the angles, the effect of the light coming through the glass. In the second image, the blending colors and all the images are really full of character and lovely. Thank you, everybody, for the wonderful comments. Okay, next artist we have is Kirk Hayes from Canada, who says, I chose to do a painting of our kitchen from imagination memory with an unlikely color palette. It feels evocative of a vintage fever dream where my inadequacies are on full display for all to see. I use straight edges and tape to help achieve the sharp geometric shapes. Found inspiration from David Hockney and the beautifully colored works of Lauren Welch. It would be easy to look at this image and think, oh, this is digital. But if you look up close, might be hard to see in the video. Kirk actually used tape with acrylic paint to put this image together, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. That is so amazing. I I heard that I could totally tell the David Hockney inspiration when I first saw this. I was like, wow. And and I could see why someone would think it's digital because the lines are so precise. And, and, and beyond that, the colors are so um, consistent throughout. It's very easy for something to get a little washed out, or a little darker here, a little lighter here. Um, but these feel, they almost feel like construction paper and you're just like, collaging them together. That's how consistent the colors are. One of my favorite moments is this section <laughs> where the two counters almost come together and then the angles of everything, 
There's a little bit of linear perspective in there. I mean, this takes time and patience. And also, I love these four colors at the top coming together to show the darkness of shadow on the right-hand side of the box. There's so many moments in this piece. I feel like every time I look at it, I see more. And yet, the splash of water is so different. Why do you think that helps the composition? I think it just adds a, a bit of difference. I mean, for the most part, the, the painting is very flat colors, very geometric shapes, and then the water splash, uh, it just has a little bit of oomph. There's something slightly different, and it draws your eye to it naturally without having to be overstated. By the way, everybody, Kirk is here live with us in the chat. I'm so glad you could join us. And we've got some great comments from people. Pizza Bagel says, I thought it was digital. Doing those are some impressive, vibrant colors. Twitchy says, wow, those lines are so clean on Kirk's piece. And Pat says, kitchens are so geometric in nature, but the colors here reflect the warmth and character that can be injected into that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think your kitchen is actually <laughs> this color, Kirk, but it has a really specific mood. And I love the teapot as a character in the scene. How would you describe the teapot as a character, Jordan? It feels like the mother of this kitchen to me. Like there's something about it that's very like almost nurturing. There's just a presence there. Just it, it feels like it belongs here in it as the as the main character. Um I don't know if there's another way to describe that, but I just get that <laughs> that emotional pull, if you will. All right. Next artist we're gonna look at is Pat McElroy from Canada who says, chose to recreate my family's cottage kitchen. That's what you're seeing here. My home kitchen is modern and utilitarian, but the cottage is nostalgic for me. It's wood paneling and red curtains always created a warm glow in the kitchen that I wanted to capture. And you can see, looking up close, there is so much variation in value. This is exciting, but let's go to the next piece and then we can come back. For this piece, Pat says, I built a 3D model in 3D Studio Max, got the perfect version of my memory. This perspective is walking in the back door when you first arrive after a long drive. I framed it and gave it to my mom for Mother's Day. Well, let's go back and look at this first image. And it's great, Pat, that you did two, because we can see so many differences between the two. So what's your take on this one, Jordan? Yeah, I, I really like the simplicity of this one. I think this one really relies on the simplicity of uh, certain shapes, like lots of uh, circles, lots of kind of square shapes or the boxy shapes on the stove. And it pulls it all together with that uh, with the teapot and, you know, or kettle or whatever that the right word for that is. Um, but I really enjoy just looking and seeing all these different shapes and how they interact together. And it's great to look at these close-ups because, Pat, I really feel like the way that you did the marker work, it's so painterly. I mean, I feel like the marker work could almost be ink wash because of the way you're applying it with so many assertive strokes. But then we get a little bit of texture in that teapot. And I think that is a really wonderful moment. What about this one, Jordan? I, I really like the mood of this piece. This feels like a really nice summer morning uh, or afternoon and just it just feels serene and peaceful. And what I imagine a lazy Sunday afternoon would be like, you know, um, I love the colors. It just feels so warm and so inviting um, and everything seems homely you know, or home or whichever one, whichever one of those words. I, I just homey? Go. Call me, yeah. Like, wait, which was, one of those is the right one? <laughs> but yeah, it just feels like home. It, it feels really comforting, and I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I feel like this one has such a wonderful mood to it, and a lot of it is in the color, which is quite subtle, but also the lighting. I mean, look at these cast shadows that are being made by the legs of the table, by the chair everything down to the little plant <laughs> hanging on the wall. I mean, it's so specific. I mean, sometimes 
when I help people who are drawing interiors, the biggest issue is they don't have enough props in the scene. And this is definitely a piece. It takes time to go through all the objects. You notice the bananas on the right, the paper towel holder that's hanging on the left-hand side, even the texture of the rug at the bottom. There's just so much care and consideration invested into this piece. And by the way, Pat is here live with us in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us, Pat. And Fauna on paper says, this feels so warm and cozy. I wanna jump right into this picture. And we also have Chibbles who says like a family member's kitchen. And ELW says, gorgeous. I love the contrast between the delicateness of the image, strength of the materials being drawn. Second has a dreamlike quality to me and the warmth really comes through. And that 3D model, that's not something you throw together in two minutes, but it's brilliant. Do you think it helped, Jordan? Oh, definitely. Um, I'm actually in the process of doing something kind of similar to this, and I'm using a 3D mock-up, and it's so helpful. It's saving me a lot of time. <laughs> so, you know, you, use the speed when you can, seriously. J. Susan Parker says, very nice perspective. Yep, Linear Perspective Police is very pleased, Pat. So nice job on all of that. All right, we've got Twitchy up next. Twitchy is self-taught, began art from scratch four and a half years ago, and explains this piece is intended to portray the bleakness of incessantly cleaning alone in the kitchen. I feel you, Twitchy, this is my life. Oh my God, it's very emotional. And Twitchy says, in recent years, I have been interrogating the ways in which our assigned genders limit our lives, and I often feel the weight of this when I'm cleaning the kitchen alone can feel my urges to make visual or musical art. Twitchy says, I'm 41, live with two kids and my partner, love them all, and they deserve the effort I made to cook for them. What do you think, Jordan? A lot of emotions in this one. Yeah, I I feel like this is an incredibly dramatic piece. Um, just from the lighting by itself, you could see a lot of how the artist is feeling when painting this and i think that the reflections especially really play into that like you can see this sort of uh this this drama this intensity added to it uh by using that element by the way everybody twitchy is live with us here in the chat i'm so glad that you can join us and wow you're making an impact here twitchy because we have a lot of comments and fatema says, I can feel the emotions and weight on the hand. Wilmy says, wow, the reflections love it. And Sentient says, almost like the counter has been scrubbed down to another layer, which makes it more emotional. You wouldn't think that cleaning is a very emotional activity. And yet I think there's something about the mass of the hand, like you can feel the physical pressure mm -hmm. scrubbing that surface. Yeah. And it's like the hand looks monumental. Why does it not look like just any other hand, Jordan? Uh, I think one, it's the angle. Uh, we're down very low and we're kind of like the size of an ant or a worm just kind of looking at this giant hand. And uh, it, the hand takes up most of the piece. I, I think with um, an assignment like this, it's very easy to draw the entire thing, the entire kitchen or the entire environment. But here it's focused on one small element and that emotional impact. And it really hones in on the frustration and the and the feelings that come from force or not forcefully, but just really intensely cleaning a kitchen. Twitchy says, I said in Discord, I was trying to make cleaning into drama. I was having this exact conversation with my mother-in-law yesterday. I was explaining to her, sometimes I'm doing the dishes at 1130 night and it just makes me angry. I mean, it's got to be done. And I'm the one that pays for it the next day when every pot is dirty. And it oftentimes feels like this just endless cycle of things. And so Twitchy, you have captured that so beautifully. And I would imagine that anybody who is in a household who shoulders that weight feels this emotion very strongly. I certainly do. So thank you for bringing that into this piece. 
All right, next artist is Sal DeVito from the US. And Sal says, this art dare was surprisingly personal for me because as working as a dishwasher for three years, I hate doing dishes. So when I have to wash them, I just throw them all into the dish strainer. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you think, Jordan? I would probably hate dishes too after that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, there, there's kind of, after that description, that kind of gives me an emotional reaction too, because um, my mom also hates putting all the dishes up in the same thing at, at once. Um, but so yeah, this feels, I can like the last piece, feel the frustration here. I can feel the sense of, uh, it feels claustrophobic to me. Like everything just kind of packed onto each other and, uh, and, you know, it's understandable why that would be the case because this is a dish drain. Um, so I think it's really clever that you're able to find a composition that worked with the emotions you were feeling and, uh, and to orchestrate it the way that you did. Well, we've got some people who do the exact same thing. Sarah says, oh my gosh, I pile mine in the dish strainer too. And I think it's fascinating that this art dare brought out a lot of emotions. Like we looked at Pat's piece, which was so homey and so warm, but we also have myself included, a lot of feelings of resentment towards doing the dishes. I'll tell you, Sal, I have days where I just look at a full counter of dirty dishes and I just want to cry. Like it just <laughs> upsets me so much. I don't know why. So I understand what that's like. And Pat says, I love the weight of that pile. You can feel how each piece fits together. Yeah, sometimes it's like a puzzle piece. Like you have to get the pot to like <laughs> yeah. just stand correctly. Always. There's all there's everyone knows that you know the skillet or the pan on top of everything else. Like everyone knows that move. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. It's, it's the secret. Aha, uh -huh, Yas yeah, says the quick lines mimic the hate. And C. Cantrell says dishes are like death and taxes, but what can we do? Yes, it's very relatable. And Twitchy says that precarious pile of dishes that only the person who stacked it knows how to unload <laughs> without dropping it all. Oh, trust me, I have dropped many dishes as a result. And Let's see, Fauna on paper says, I love the different directions of marks in this one. Yeah, like the marker work, it's really bold. Do you see how there's all these diagonals yeah. that are pushed into the pot and then the window? Why do you think the window helps? Uh, I think that it just brings a little bit of a difference to the, the space. I mean, so far we're looking at the wall, the countertop, the you know, the man-made structures, but the window kind of gives a little bit of just the nature, like the natural um, world. And so I think it just adds a little bit of contrast and probably some much needed uh, uh, alleviation from the stress of washing the dishes. <laughs> All right, the next artist we have is Anna Ziegler from the Netherlands. And Anna says, my kitchen's quite tiny and taking the reference picture, I had the association that it looks like a tower. With this piece, I tried to break out of this habit of only using brushes. And I use various sticks from the woods to apply the acrylic color and also water soluble colored pencils. In a few spots, I put some water on them as well. So this is Anna's final artwork, but these are the branches that Anna decided to paint with. And this is the reference photo that Anna started with and then here's the artwork. And, and Anna, thank you so much for showing those process images. I think that's so helpful for people to see your materials and your inspiration. So what do you think, Jordan? Yeah, this is fascinating. And I have to be honest, I never thought of a kitchen as a tower before. Like there's something really no. unique about that idea. Um, so I'm really trying to think in my mind as quickly as I can. Like I've never seen that before. And so you found a way to communicate a kitchen space very, very differently than pretty much anything else I've seen. And uh, by adding these photo references that you use too, there's a lot more emotion that comes from it. And um, yeah, I just really have an appreciation for that. Yeah, a lot of the pieces we've seen so far are fairly realistic, real life world depictions. But Anna, yours is so surrealistic and it really does have this towering feeling to it 
that is so unusual. So I really respond to the dramatic transformation that you started with an ordinary kitchen space, you manipulated it, played with your materials, it turned into something completely different. And that transformation, I think, is fascinating. For example, we have AHA who says, it looks like the room is at the top of an elevator and is about to drop. And also we have Seven Angelic who says, I like the translucent bit going on there. Feels like ghost walls. Yeah, what about the, the marks and the color palette, Jordan? Yeah, it feels like a very dark night. Like it just feels like um, there's some mystery here. It might it almost feels kind of like a, like ghosty in a way. Um, so, or maybe that it's abandoned or something. Like there's a story here that um, that is coming through. And again, it's very different than what um, is sometimes the norm when it comes to paying attention. Because sometimes it's always light and fluffy and airy and homey. And then there's some that's just as a little bit of a twist to it. So I really like the drama here. By the way, everybody, Anna is live with us here in the chat. I'm so happy that you can join us. And we do have a super sticker from RB Dick. Thank you so much. Those super stickers, they add up over time. So even a dollar, two dollars is a big difference for us. So keep those coming. And we also have Frank Squid who says the photo of the sticks is a piece of art in itself, hang it on my wall. And we also have from Pizza Bagel, colors are very moody. Fauna says, reminds me of a nightmare when you're falling and you can't stop. Yeah. Beautiful piece, Anna, wonderful application and layering of materials. I think you did very nice work on this. We have some prizes to give out. The prizes go to Sal DeVito wins the honorable mention. We loved your piece, Sal. We thought it had so much depth and emotion embedded in the narrative that you showed. So congratulations, Sal, on the honorable mention. And the prize winner is Twitchy. We're so compelled by this piece, Twitchy. I think this is just so powerful of an image and it really packs a big punch jordan we as a staff we we were just in love with this piece yeah i think i think we all kind of resonated with this with this image and uh even if we did not have the art statement of the emotions behind like or the reason behind it i think we all still feel that impact and so yeah we did a wonderful job to achieve so many nice comments from everybody supporting each other. This community is so encouraging and I love so much the way you are all so encouraging. Also, we have another super sticker from Ray Mustard. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you everybody for supporting all the artists who participated in this art dare. Let's talk about the June art dare. The June art dare, we're going to call it contemporary art backwards. So what does this mean? We want you to find a contemporary artist you've never heard of. We want you to find an artist that inspired them. Jordan, you are a contemporary artist. <laughs> who is an artist who has inspired you? Uh, I've been inspired by uh... A lot of people. I would say maybe Nathan Fowkes is a good one. So for Jordan to do this art dare, Jordan would look up Nathan Fowkes, find an article, an interview, anything about Nathan Fowkes. Find that artist, and that becomes a chain of three artists. Jordan, Nathan Fowkes, and whoever inspired him. Now, you can't do yourself, by the way. <laughs> I just used Jordan as an example. You have to pick another contemporary artist. But the idea here is to create a chain of three to five artists or more going back into history. We want you to make a map of the sequence of artists however you want. Any 2D, 3D media, however you want to do it. Good question from Pizza. 
How do you identify if someone is a contemporary artist? What if there aren't any articles on them? The contemporary artist has to be someone who's alive right now. So Michelangelo doesn't count. They have to be somebody who's currently making work. If there aren't any articles on them, find somebody else because you really want evidence that this person is influenced by another artist. I mean, really, what are we trying to get people to do here, Jordan? What is the point of this prompt? I, I see it as just being able to learn what your heroes were inspired by. Um, I, I noticed like with musicians, for example, they'll go back to their, their roots. They don't listen just to the contemporary arts. They go back in time and get inspired by those people. But then what are your heroes? What were they inspired by? And so it's really just starting to give us more appreciation for the artists who came before us. That's how I see this prompt. And also it's to send you down a rabbit hole of art history because a lot of people feel that art history is very inaccessible or they look at those timelines of 50,000 years and go, oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. And this is our way of saying, hey, you don't have to study all of art history. You can find a path that comes back to you and your interests. And so that really is the purpose of this. So for example, here we have H.R. Giger, who is a contemporary artist. He was alive, sorry. <laughs> we have to pick somebody who's alive. But he was influenced by Ernest Fuchs. And this image by Ernst Fuchs was inspired by Leo Kuhn and his sons, which is a Hellenistic Greek sculpture that's in the Vatican museums. And isn't it cool, Jordan, to look at the similarities between these two images by Fuchs and the Leo Kuhn? Yeah, that is fascinating. Just, I mean, that's hundreds of years worth of difference. Maybe even a thousand years. You said Greek time period. So yeah, thousands yeah. of mm -hmm. years. And you could still learn something. So that is actually amazing. And I would recommend if you want a primer on art history, I would watch this stream because we talk about how to make art history more accessible. Because for a lot of people, it's just perceived as being very stuffy, very academic, and we're trying to throw that out the window. I mean, what was your art history experience, Jordan? I um, I didn't really find it all that fascinating. I'll just say that I my, my eyes had a hard time staying open. I'll just I'll just leave it with that. <laughs> well, I'm a big nerd, so I just love all this stuff. I did not enjoy the exams, but I yeah. do really love reading about all of this stuff. Dara's asking how, quote, big does the artist need to be? Someone from the farmer's market or someone who has, say, shown in a gallery. Doesn't matter. It could be your sister. If you can ask your sister, hey, who are you inspired by as an artist? Start there. Doesn't matter. They just have to be alive. As long as they fulfill that and they have a vibrant studio practice, that is totally enough. So, Jordan, what are we talking about when we say make a visual map? because this is a digital collage I threw together. Mm -hmm. I overlaid the three images. Does mm -hmm. the map have to be a literal map or can you mess around a little more? Uh, I think it's, well, I, th I think it would be a rather boring project if it, you couldn't mess around more like that. I think the whole point is just to say, hey, how far can you take this? Um, you know, how do you see these images influencing each other? So if you want to make it a collage, if you want to, you, you know, put, overlay images on top of each other if you want to put them kind of make a triptych piece or whatever it is that you're doing i think um i think it's open game or fair, fair game rather yeah this can be your art dare you do the research you write it down add some arrows it can be as simple as you want it to be or if you want to make something that's more like an artwork mm -hmm. i printed out pictures of the artists i tore them up and i made a collage because I thought it'd be fun to see how they interact. Now, Ka Ong says, so we need to find someone famous for some extent. Not necessarily. You could ask each other in the Discord. Anyone in the Discord is eligible. Like we can say to Dara, who is in the Discord, hey Dara, who are you inspired by? And go from there. You don't have to start with someone famous. In fact, sometimes getting to talk to the artist 
like, hey, Jordan, why Nathan Fokes? Mm -hmm. That's very powerful, don't you think, instead of somebody out of a glossy magazine? Yeah, I think there's a level of realness that comes from asking your peers, um, because if we're all artists, there's all someone that we've been inspired by. It's, it's so whether it's Nathan Fouts or Bob Ross or Michelangelo or whoever, there's there's always a train. So you can find anybody. It just the project just says contemporary artists. So as long as they're alive, have active studio practice, like Prof Loop said, you're you're pretty good there, and you'll find you'll find a trail. Seven Angelic says, any tips? Where to look for an artist you don't know? Lauren and I just did a stream, how to start learning contemporary art. We give you tons and tons of options for ways to do that. For example, Carolyn just signed up for Hyperallergic and Artsy. Those are two online publications that we recommend. There are many options and I can post in the Discord later. We do have a page that lists all the different ways we put in all the links and everything. So you can certainly do that. You can ask in Discord. Hey, any contemporary artists, I'm looking for a sculptor who uses found objects, who would be a good person. Frank says, would a tattoo artist be a contemporary artist as long as they're alive? <laughs> Absolutely. Tattoo is an art form, right, Jordan? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, definitely. I've seen some amazing work done, um, just a different type of canvas, that's all. Seven Angelic says, what if you did a master study of each, then put them together? Sure. I mean, that's a ton of work. <laughs> but if you want to challenge yourself in that way, that's fantastic. Carolyn's asking, my dad was a fine art major, had a studio for a while when I was a kid, but didn't continue it for his whole career. Can I use him? Yeah. We're not going to be sticklers about this. Unless you pick an artist who's dead, you're going to fulfill the requirements. So we're not going to say anything about, oh, they must have been an art form. We don't care about that. It just has to be somebody who has made art and would like to speak to you about that. ELW says, do we have to start with the visual artists? What about musicians or playwrights? Yes, only visual artists. Art Dare Leap. Good question, Amanda. <laughs> Coming right up. We're going to ask you to do sequences on three contemporary artists instead of one, okay? You can do as many as you want. I mean, we recommended a chain of three to five, but Jordan, don't you think there's the possibility to more than five artists in a single chain? Oh, easily. I mean, there's so many artists in the world. I mean, think about how many people are watching the stream right now and we would all be considered contemporary artists. That's like eight, that's almost 80 people. So <laughs> there's, there's so many, ways you can go about this so i i would say don't limit yourself um just yeah don't even, don't even worry about limiting just go for it shoot for the moon help each other in the discord we also have a channel in the discord called art world resources where a lot of people will post oh i found this artist they're fantastic there's this book help each other with this. This is an art dare that is so much more fun if you can tap each other because contemporary art is such a huge topic. It's very hard to know where to begin. So if you help each other, that's a big difference. So here is the art dares channel in our discord and hang out there, help each other. And then once you've made your visual map, you want to tag us on Instagram and use hashtag artprofdare. But if you are not on Instagram, go to artprof.org, the page for this month's, next month's Art Dare. You scroll down, there is a link to an upload form. So you can use this if you are not on social media. And we would love for you to join Jordan and I in the Art Prof Discord. We will be there immediately after the stream. We will be typing in the chat. We can talk more about zombie artists actually all i can think about is zombie dr strange because <laughs> i saw dr strange too yesterday so he's like on my brain right now but I anyway think, i don't think you need to have seen the movie to get better at cumberbatch on your brain though let's be honest <laughs> no that, it's just like you know icing on the cake so <laughs> there are many ways you can support art prof you can become a monthly patreon supporter we have all kinds of perks and rewards that you can sign up for. You can buy original artwork by our staff on our Etsy shop. You can also purchase an artist call. As much as our content helps a lot of people, a lot of people have very specific 
circumstances and they really need customized advice. So this is a great way to tap our ideas. And thank you to our top Patreon supporters. Look at this, Jordan. We've got Cameron Casey, Laura King, two new top Patreon supporters. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us. But our second slide, we lost a whole column and a half. And that's very sad to me <laughs> because we need your support. And the Patreon went down $62 this week. And I'll tell you guys the amount of money we get from the Patreon, it still covers the vast majority of our expenses. So we need this funding to keep going. You get exclusive email newsletters from Lauren and Jordan. You get access to the Patreon channels and the Discord. Super fun, everybody, to hang out with us there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.